projects of Jan Hicks Creates here. And it is time for my stitch with me. And you can see what I'm working on. Fractal bookmark. This is Fractal 705. The bookmark is the center of it. Isn't this gorgeous? I know, I keep saying that. So I was working on this diagonal last night and I just have this little bit more to do in here. So I thought I would get that done here this morning. It is Thursday, August 15th. I had mentioned in my video the other day that I was going to be recording my stitch with me on Thursday, but this won't actually go live on Facebook until Friday. So how is everybody doing today? I hope you've all had a good week. My week has been okay. I had my, um, I had my second physical therapy appointment yesterday and I think we may finally have gotten to what the problem is with my back. We're pretty sure now that it's a problem with the SI joint. So that's the sacrum ilium, I think is the bone. The sacrum is the center of your pelvis. The um, ilium is the hip bone, the kind of bone that's, I don't know, I can't do it on here, I'm too close. Um, that that joint isn't rotating properly, like when I bend and when, as I walk when my pelvis is moving. So, um, yeah, after much poking and prodding and moving, uh, that's kind of what we've decided it is. So he's given me an exercise to do here at home. Oh, look, and now you get to see my back. Isn't that gorgeous? Actually working on the diagonal like this, the backs don't get too awfully messy, but they're always going to be a mess with a full coverage piece. So, um, I showed you kind of my new way of handling all the loose needles or how to end the threads and keep it on the needle the other day. That is going well for the most part. It is here. I know it looks a mess when you see all these threads kind of laying here, but it actually doesn't bother me. And it's um, because I'm, I know the order of things now, I'm familiar enough with where all the symbols are. It doesn't take me long to find where I need to be and just either grab the needle out or put it back in. And it is help speeding up things. It's helping things to go quicker. Um, just in general on this piece. So that is a good thing. And I do think this is how I will work um, my hade when I get it. Oops, sorry about that. Oh, shoot. Um, I will like leave more space in between the rows. You can see I have plenty. That's the last one there. I have plenty of fabric still down here at the bottom. So I'll leave more space in between the rows and that will help to make things seem more coherent on that that fabric. So let's see, first I wanted to um, talk a little order of business here. We've had a lot of new people subscribe, of course. Um, I know a lot of you are relatively new to Floss Tube as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the ads. I know this comes up periodically and I think it's good to just kind of give a refresher and like I said for people that are new. For those of us that are monetized on on YouTube, that means you're seeing those ads. And that is a way that YouTube is basically rewarding us, paying us a little bit for using their platform to put at to um, put our videos out. It does help a little bit to defray costs. Um, 
but what you have to do is is let the ads play you don't have to watch them um but you know get up and refill your your drink of choice take a little potty break um i actually use them to get more concentrated stitching in because you know i stitch faster when i'm just looking at my stitching rather than up and back at the video so um i would ask that you just let them play i know you guys appreciate being here and appreciate all i do and especially like with the giveaways um the postage cost yesterday i got all the packages mailed <laughs> and it was it was a chunk of change let's just put it that way so it really does help me if you just let the videos play and um I know some of them can be long and I think actually the longer ones like I don't know whether I haven't seen any recently like the there's like some that are four or five minutes I don't watch through those as long as you let them play like 30 seconds to a minute it counts um and like I said I haven't seen those in a while so I don't know whether YouTube is still doing those but um myself and my fellow floss tubers who are monetized appreciate your support by doing that. That is definitely a good way to support us. Okay, that is that one. So let's see. I wanted to let you guys know, um, if you like digital subscriptions of magazines, I get my my digital subscription of the Cross Stitcher magazine on Zinio. So I got an email the other day that they are offering the, um, let's see, it's Cross Stitch Crazy. F five issues for a dollar for each issue, so five dollars. So, hold on, checking where I am. Um, I went ahead and signed up for it. It's only good through the 18th of this month, so only a few more days left. But if you are interested in, um, okay, so here we are. I need the last stitch on this diagonal here after this green one is a new thread that I don't have on here. So I come to this first and it's the symbol is six. I don't have a needle part there. So I come over to my master threads on my little thread keeps and pull one out. And I have several of the um, used threads from before hanging on here. So anyways, um, now I don't know actually I wonder if it's just for people who already use Zinio. I think when I looked up Cross Stitch Crazy on the app itself, on Zinio itself, it did not come up showing that special. So maybe if you're interested, maybe go to their the Zinio website and see if it's listed on there at all because it doesn't seem to be showing in the app itself. But anyways, I did that yesterday. I looked at the first issue. I have to say, I wasn't too impressed. Um, not my style. Most of them are little cutesy patterns, at least in this one. Um, they did have some cute designs by Emma Congdon for Halloween. So for all, all of our Halloween lovers out there, you may love it. Um, there, there just really wasn't anything in, in this particular issue that appealed to me. So this was just one stitch on this color. And I tell you what, guys, <laughs> when I get to a pattern that doesn't, that isn't quite this confetti laden, I don't think I'm going to know how to act. <laughs> really, it's, it's, some rows are... 10 different colors for the 10 stitches on a row. I mean, it's just insane. I had a few rows up here that were the same color. There was like six stitches in a row and four stitches in a row. But other than that, 
I mean, it's gorgeous. That's what makes it gorgeous, right? And I'm not gonna stop it. Holy cow. All right, so, and that one off. And yeah, you know, there is a lot of starting and stopping, but I'm still really appreciating working on the diagonal and having, um, really knowing where I am. Okay, so the six, so I started this needle with that color in it. It was just that one stitch. So now I'm just gonna take it and park it here. And what I've started to do is I actually, we have parchment paper. I actually um, cut off a piece of the parchment paper and I put it in between here and I fold this up at night to put it away because I was finding, because this is a, a kind of a stickier feeling fabric, when I would open it up to use it, you know, the, the threads would be kind of sticking to each other after being folded in half. So when I put it away at night, I just put this piece of parchment paper in between um, and that keeps the threads from sticking to each other. So learning as I go. All right, so I've used up all the needles I had stuck in here. I have, okay, so I'm using up all of my needles, basically, all the ones that work for this. This side was totally filled with needles. That's all gone. I have a few down here, I think, that are some 26s that I could maybe use. This other one is my bigger ones, and I do have some 26s in here. And you know, so I've been using mostly 28s. Um, 26s, I don't know, in a way they almost work better because they open up the, they open up the, um, let me see where I am. Oh, wait a second here. Where did I put you? Did I put you in the wrong place? That goes there, that goes there. Yes, you go over here. See, even, I obviously need the pre-gridded fabric. More on that later. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the size 26 needles. That, um, you know, they almost work better because they have a tendency to open up the space so your thread as it goes down through doesn't get abraded as much and of course when you have stitches this tight and this on the back um, there is some abrading that goes on All right. that goes there what do I want to do? Let's see, one, two, three, so this is that one. That's the last of that one. There's gonna be lots of ending here. And actually, I don't have one of that color. See? Yeah. All right, so let me do this one. So when I start my heaven and earth designs, my farewell to anger, I will be preloading all the needles so and I think there's 90 colors in that so I will be preloading all the needles and parking them on this this piece of fabric um, so that I have everything ready to go I am debating oh, so many things um, the poor people on the For Love of Diagonal Stitching group <laughs> are probably getting tired of answering my questions because I have so many. You know, since I, I've never done a project that size, I've never done a Haid. This is actually my first full coverage project. Um, come on. I always stitch in hand and I I'm, I'm, don't think I can stitch in hand. There is somebody on the For Love of Diagonal Stitching who says that she does, she is working on a Haid stitching in hand. And that kind of blows my mind a bit. I don't think I could do that. 
Let's see where I need to park this. So that one is over here. Oh, and then I need the left parents. Okay, so that's there. I do not have that one out yet. So preloading all the needles would mean that, you know, when it comes to this kind of thing, the needle would be ready and I could just pick it up and go. So it speeds, speeds it up a bit. And I don't mind, I'm finding I don't mind at all that there's all this back and forth. And like I said, this particular pattern, because there is so much confetti, is kind of a pain in this regard. And this is why you get backs looking like this, because there's all this stopping and starting. Where am I going with this? That's over here. So yeah, my brain is filled with pre-gridded fabric or not pre-gridded fabric. Lap stand, floor stand, how would I use it? What best fits my situation? Um, how often am I going to use it? Actually, the how often doesn't bother me a whole lot because I have several Hades. You know, I'm going to be starting two Hades next year. So um, it will get its fair share of use. I don't see myself ever switching over to being a totally frame stand person. I love stitching in hand too much. But for these big ones, like she showed a picture, the one, the woman who is stitching in hand and she does have like the fabric rolled up on the different sides. So she does just have the middle part that she's working on, but that still feels like there's an awful lot of fabric sitting in your lap and I don't need any help being warm. <laughs> these days and out here <laughs> so that that doesn't throw me so I've been I started by researching lap stands and um, thinking that you know that would be the uh, less I don't know how to put it, lower profile thing to use. But then I got to thinking that um, this fabric is really stiff, so it inflates me a little bit. Um, that would be the lower profile thing to use. But then I started to think about how do I sit? How am I most comfortable? Um, and like you have the lap stands that are actually sitting on your lap. I worked, watched Brenda, um, Handwork Maniac's video the other day of, um, her Elon stand. Is it, I'm going to get it confused. I don't remember which country is which or which country, which company is which now. Um, she has the Elon and the Gazelle. And so I watched her video showing those. And so the Elan is one that sits on your lap. And it looks comfortable, but more often than not, you know, I don't necessarily always sit with my legs straight out. More often than not, I'm bending one or the other, you know, up towards my body. So it, it wouldn't be a flat surface then for the stand to sit on. So then there's Carolyn's, um, Carolyn's video showing the hearthside, is it hearthside crafts, 
lap stand, and that's the one where you have the, a leg on uh, a leg of the stand on either side of your own leg. And I thought, well, that looks good because, but then maybe I wouldn't be able to move my legs around in that either, you know, to bend my leg up because this the leg of the stand would be in the way. Also, my concern is how close to my face can I get the lap stand. Now, the, the Hearthside Crafts one does have a variety of holes on the side where you can you know the height that you can actually put your um, whatever it is you're working on you know the adapter for whichever type of frame you're using oh look three in a row yay um, but I don't know whether it would get close enough I would say right now my stitching is probably it's a about the length, like if I'm, you know, I'm holding my hand open from thumb to here. My comfortable distance is that. Maybe a little bit longer. Maybe a, no. Sorry, I'm right up against the camera, aren't I? Um, yeah, I can go a little bit, maybe an inch longer than that. So I don't know whether the 10 inches that I think most people say or from what I've, I've read and seen, 10 inches is as close as it gets with a lap stand, and I don't know whether that's close enough for me. I have to have Mike measure. <laughs> so then I started looking at the, at the floor stands. And again, so my, it, for those of you that have watched my Stitchy Spot video, you saw that the area of the couch I sit in, it's called the Cuddler on this particular brand of couch because it is kind of a curved, rounded little section of the sectional. And so it's, it's a deeper sitting space than just your regular couch space. Now I do, I am propped up by several pillows and stuff because of my back, so I am sitting a little bit far forward, but it is a bit of a climb <laughs> to get out of it. So, um, Again, working through in my mind, like these, these floor stands that you have sitting right in front of you wouldn't work. Because right, you know, I have the, um, our ottoman is right in front of the couch, you know, where I'm resting my feet. And it would be, it would just be a mess to try and get all that in there. The stand would have to be in between the couch and the ottoman and there just isn't that much room because I'm a short person. <laughs> so the ottoman's fairly close. Um, yeah, so a floor stand that would sit in front of me wouldn't work. So looking at like the Lowry's or, um, is it Estonia? Where's the other metal one? I don't remember. Um, yeah, so all this is going in my mind. I'm going to be spending some time today watching, there's a bunch of videos for the Lowry out there, so I'm going to be watching those and see um, how people use them. One of my other other pet peeves is that it's, you know, easy to turn over to start and end threads. Because Lord knows if I were working on this where I have to start and end threads constantly, that's important, right? So I don't know. I know probably a lot of you have a lot of recommendations. Somebody else showed a lap, excuse me, a lap stand. I, I posted this question on the For Love of Diagonal Stitching group, so I've got a lot of great input from those ladies. Um, somebody posted about a lap stand that's a big hoop. And it's just one of these that kind of goes under the lap stand that just kind of goes under one leg you know, on the side, or maybe it's meant to go in between. I don't know, I'll have to research that. It looks like though it would go on the side and it's a big size hoop. So that looks, you know, it wouldn't take up, up, a, up a lot of space. It's a big enough workspace to work in. It looks like it would be easily, move, easily movable for getting up and down. Um, I could 
probably move my legs any way I wanted. My big question on that one still is, is it easy to turn over to get to the back? Oh, shoot, I left that one behind. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. And the other thing is for a lap stand, so looking at the Lowry, it go, comes at you to the side, so that's good. There's been discussion that I've seen um, on the, what is it, Cross Stitch Frames group about um, it not being able to handle bigger rods or bigger frames. I don't know that I would be worried about that because I don't plan on, I have to actually pull out my bin of my old, um, I still have a lot of scroll, I think I kept them, scroll rods and other sizes of Q-snaps. Um, pull that out and kind of look through it. I, I don't think I'd be using anything too big anyways because I don't have it and I, I'm not planning. If I need to get anything, it will be a different size of Q-snap because um, I don't know that I'll be using a scroll frame. I may just stick with Q-snaps. I don't know. Lots and lots and lots to figure out here. And then, let's see, I need to count, hold on. It's down in the corner. One, two, three. Um, then the whole pre-gridded to, to get pre-gridded fabric or not to get pre-gridded fabric. I've pretty much decided to get pre-gridded. Um, I would be getting the easy count from one, two, three stitch. So it's, um, yeah, I think that will work. It's a little cheaper but they have the sizes that are big enough for this kind of project. Um, I don't know, the Heaven, Earth, Heaven and Earth probably sells their fabric. If they're sending you just fabric, I assume they surge it, I don't know. And that, that actually would be, I'll have to look at the price difference and see, see if it's worth it. And I think Heaven and Earth is coming from California, isn't it? Their shipping may be a little better if they ship by weight. So yeah, though those all those things, getting ready and looking forward to my first hade. But yeah, if you guys have any input, the other thing I you know I have to look at the videos for the Lowry to see if I need the extension bar. I don't think the corner or the um, the arm of my couch isn't as big as some that I've seen, so I think I will be okay on that. Lowry's are sold, or at least the one, the powder gray one would finish, which is probably what I would get, are sold on Amazon. But I think they are still coming. It says like sold by some UK shop and fulfilled by Amazon. So they are still coming from Amazon. All right, so this one needs to get put away. small needles left. I think I need more needles. Alright, we're going to do this one next. 
So yeah, and today I'm probably going to put this away once I finish this diagonal and start working on my Chatelaine. Today I'll spend on my Chatelaine. I meant to go back and forth this week. But once I get started on these diagonals, and again, this is kind of, kind of part of my personality. When I start something, I like to finish it, you know, some task before I go on to the next one. And of course, that's pretty much impossible with these things, right? But, um, so I, anyway, I worked two days on this because I wanted to get this diagonal done instead of going back and forth. So today I'll work on the shadow lane. I don't know how much time I'm going to get today because I have, I want to get the place kind of cleaned and read up before we head over to the big island tomorrow morning. Yay, I can't wait. So there'll be a lot of stuff to do today and run out. We have to get cat food and we are having a pet sitter come in for this. Since it's just basically a long weekend, so we have to get some more cat food and some more greenies before we go. So lots of stuff on my mind. And you know, It's not like I'm even going to, well, if I make up my mind on my frame, I probably will go ahead and buy that. Um, the fabric, I'm still going to wait a bit. I am getting the Farewell to Anger calls for 10 skeins of black, um, 310. And that's if you're, I think that's if you're doing two over one on 25 count. I haven't decided on that yet either. This is 28 count over one, and of course I'm very comfortable with it, but several people have talked about how, you know, how tight it gets on the back on 28 count. Um, I do not want to use two strands. I only want to use one strand. So, so I've been asking if, um, if one strand on 25, looks good. I need to see some pictures to see how it looks, if the coverage is good enough. So that's another thing I'm debating, but also um, I started to say, so Farewell to Anger calls for 10 skeins of black. Amazon has a box of Anchor Black Floss, 12 skeins, for 1050. So I went ahead and ordered that. Get out of the way. Where am I going here? Skip one. So I ordered that, so I will be using the anchor floss, the anchor black, on my farewell to anger. So that made me ang it made me angry, made me happy. Um I told Carolyn about it, and she also ordered it. But yeah, I want to know what the coverage is like over one on 25 count. Now I did, um, hmm, just thinking my Amid Amish life back there is 22 count, and I'm pretty sure I did over, I did one strand on that. I'll have to look at that and double check. So yeah, if that's 22 count, that's 22 count hard anger. Um, 25 should be fine, right? I also toyed with the thought a little bit of just doing like continental rather than cross stitch just to help it to go faster. But I don't know. I think I'm so I'm so comfortable with cross stitch. I don't know. I don't know if the coverage, you know, if I did go to 25 count and, and did continental, then I probably would have to use two strands. And my biggest thing is, is not using two strands just because I don't want to fuss with it. 
don't know whether you can see this, but so this is, I'm cutting my strands about 12 to 18 inches. And so there's still a good chunk of this left. This is 3371. But I think you can really tell how abraded this is getting. So that's something else I'd like to hear from people. If you recommend using like 26 size needles on this um, on this kind of work. So it does open up the holes more so you don't get as much abrasion. Inquiring minds want to know everything because inquiring minds are newbies in this regard. Almost there. This is three stitches with this color. Yay. It is truly the little things in life, right? So yeah, my brain is just going round and round and round with this. And I'm afraid if I did get everything now, because I this is like all I've been thinking of, um, I'd be so tempted to start it. And then Carolyn would hurt me. No, she wouldn't hurt me, but I wouldn't do that. January 1st, that's our start. Somebody had asked on, I think it was the For Love of Digital um, Cross Stitch again, or the Diagonal, not Digital. Um, I, we have a lot of people that are joining in, and somebody asked in, in the cell, the Farewell to Anger cell, in case you are not following how my brain is jumping all over the place, somebody asked if, um, how they could join. You know, if we were going to have a special Facebook group or anything, I don't think so. Mostly because um, it's just one more thing to manage. And um, yeah, I don't know that we have the time to do that or the energy, but we'll, we'll come up with a hashtag. So, you know, if you're posting on, come on, if you're posting on Instagram or on any of the Facebook groups, if you just use the ha hashtag, people can then search on the hashtag uh -huh. to see all the different people's progress. And of course, we'll be posting on For Love of Diagonal Stitching and on the Heaven and Earth Designs group. So there's enough other places, I think, to post things. Almost there. For those of you that have been to the Big Island, what is your favorite thing to do there? Is there anything special like, of course, we're going to be going up to the volcano. I don't know whether Ann and Mel are hiking people, so I don't know whether we'll be able to do any of the hikes necessarily, but... Um, yeah, what do you like to do on the Big Island? We will be arriving in Kona, staying one night in Kona um, before we head up to the uh, Airbnb that we're that we have reserved up at the volcano. I will, of course, be doing videos and photos of it all, and Mike will be taking his fancy new camera and doing that. I believe the protest at Mauna Kea of over the telescope have ended. I believe they decided to postpone construction for another, another couple of years, I think, to see if they could get a resolution to um, the disputes. There is work still going on at the other telescopes on Moana Kea. I don't know whether we'll get over to that side of the island. I don't know that we'll necessarily be driving, you know, doing a lot of other driving around. Like I said, after we spend a couple nights in at the volcano, we'll be driving over to, oh, there's my last needle. We'll be driving over to um, Hilo 
spend a little bit of time in Hilo, and then from there, Mike and I will rent a car and drive back to Kona. Southwest is supposed to be starting some flights over to Hilo as well. Right now, they only fly into Kona, but they were supposed to be soon starting flights over to Hilo. I'll need to check into that. It's not like we're going to change our reservations at this point, but it'd be good to know. Um, okay, so I need my next skinniest needle. This is probably a 26, so see how it feels. Look, we're almost done. Now you'll notice even still, I didn't stay very, well, I stopped parking down here and I'll explain that in a second, but even still, I didn't stay totally within the diagonal. On this pattern, because the, the colors are so scattered, I guess. Um, like in here, this color is used here, like the diagonal is, is coming here. And so these are colors that I went over the diagonal, they're used in here, but not any place else in this area. So it's like, you know something, it just makes sense to grab those while I'm there instead of having to to re-thread the needle. When I come down the next diagonal, boy, this needle is longer than those. I was using those petites. <laughs> this one, I, th I think it's a regular size, but it feels so much longer. So I appreciate everybody's input on the sheep design. I haven't had a chance to actually sit down and respond to comments yet. And that's all for that thread. Um, the majority of people do seem to like the pink. And that is probably the one I'll go with. I think it'll be fun. It may not be the best choice. It may be the best choice. Um, but I think it'll be fun. And actually, I may take that one. I was going to take the mushrooms, but you know, because the mushrooms, um, the DMC for that is all on the rings with all the rest of the project's DMCs. That is the one downside of having like those master, those master rings. Um, I have to, I would have to like go through the list and take off what I wanted to take with me and then put them back on when I came back. So I think maybe what I'll do is take the sheep one with me. So I'll be taking the volcano one and I'll take the sheep one just for, you know, so I have a couple going because you can't take just one, right? All right. Look at this, I'm almost done. Does this feel like it's dragging for you guys? <laughs> it doesn't actually bother me at all. Um, it isn't the fastest way to stitch, that's for sure. But like I said, the time I spent hunting, trying to find where the next one was in the pattern and where that was on the fabric and then counting down to it, this still just strikes me as faster. And it's, it's just easier to keep track of. I know I sound like I'm continuing to justify it, right? That's okay. Trying to find where I can 
put this needle in. There's already so many threads in some of these. And I think that's probably the hardest thing about this method, the beginning and the end where you're starting and stopping, like the, the beginning of the diagonal and the end of the diagonal where you're starting and stopping so many threads does have a bit of a tendency to bulk up more. So getting that into the fabric. Find one more needle I can use. I would like to hear your opinion about whether you think the 26s. Of course, I have more 28s than 26s, so I'm not changing this one now. But if I should invest in 26s for my Hade, especially, well, regardless of whether I'm working on the 25 count or the 28 count. All right, so there's the bottom of the diagonal. Now, this particular color I missed up here. There we have it. Now, I am not going to end that right now. Take the time, because I want to show you. See how, so this is what fascinates me about this. Look at this starting here. There's another swath of turquoise starting in here. And then you have these bits of purple coming in here. So let's look at the picture and see what we have going on here. So I am looking at this there. That's there. Okay, so I know this is looks really pixelated. So this is where I'm working, coming down here. So there's that little blue here, and then there's that little turquoise, like the dots there, and then coming down into this more yellow. So the next time, so that was right in here, right? So the next 10, I'll be getting close to the edge of this centerpiece. Oh, gosh, that's so pretty. Oh, this is why I can't put it down. All right, guys, that was a long one today. Thank you for sticking with me on this. I hope you found that at least somewhat interesting. And yay, another diagonal done. Like I said, I stopped parking the threads because um, I was finding that I would park thinking, okay, this is the only one of this color here, like there isn't one further up here. And then when I was actually stitching down, I was like, well, darn it, there was another one there. So I'd, I would start, like I'd come to the, a color and I'd start a thread, start a needle with it and stitch that and maybe stitch a few and then come down a little bit further, like, okay, where's the next place I need to park that? And find that I had already parked a thread in there from the previous diagonal. And that would just piss me off because then I'd have to end and start a, and then end a thread and have, you know, it just made an extra, extra work. So I've decided I'm going to stop parking as I'm going down. And you can tell I decided that right here. So I still have these threads parked, but, um, yeah, I think it'll, it'll end some more of the frustration. All right, guys, 50 minutes. I am out. You have a great day. You have a great weekend. I will see you next week. Um, we don't get back until Monday, so I will see you Tuesday for my regular FlossTube channel. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Bye-bye.